my soul, my soul, leading me to that bright, beautiful goal, bright goal, cheering me when I'm sad, keeping me free and glad, Jesus is keeping watch over my soul, my soul. Hello everyone. Uh, today I would like to talk to ex-listeners, to friends, sponsors, and even to the owner of Amazing Grace Christian Radio. Uh, but also I would like to greet uh, the Christians of Cornerstone Baptist Church in Kigali and all of fundamental Baptist Church Christians wherever we are around the world. The Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. My name is Kasina Mwang. I was the manager of Amazing Grace Christian Radio uh, until April 7, 2014, the day I was kidnapped by the one of the secret disciples and held me in a known safe house, torturing me and doing all bad things I can't hear explain. Amazing Grace Christian Radio started the broadcasting officially on March 15, 2009 and was closed on April 24, 2018 by the Rwandan government through uh, RURA, which is a Rwanda utilities regulations. Uh, according to RURA, the revocation for the failure by Amazing Grace Christian Radio to comply with Rura's instruction given after a summary was aired by the radio on 29 of January 2018 in which a local pastor, Nicholas Mivikona, repeatedly insulted the woman, referring them as evil. Uh, today I want to show you how all those were the pretext. Uh, before I worked with Amazing Grace Christian Radio as a journalist, I worked with missionary Greg Brian Schuf as one of his interpreters, uh, and uh, we used to go around the country preaching the good news of free salvation by grace through Jesus Christ, house to house, in marketed places, in the ways, centers, uh, in a knock knock or so winning a program since 2005. In the beginning, it was not easy uh, because people were familiar with preaching of going to heaven and get salvation by their own works, by their own efforts. So, hearing salvation is a free gift was something new in the ears of many people. And I remember most of the time after preaching and praying for people for receiving salvation, Pastor Greg Shulf used to ask those people uh, this kind of a question. Uh, if tomorrow, or after tomorrow, or maybe after one week or two weeks, uh, you die, where will you go? And most of the people used to immediately answer without even thinking, I will go to hell. Uh, other very few, like 10%, uh, used to say, I will try my best and not make sin. Uh, very few people used to say, I will go to heaven. So, with those people, Pastor Shuf used to insist uh, and had to go back again and start preaching fresh because the people, even though prayed for salvation and convinced by the Bible, were not sure about where they can go when they die. So, he used to preach over and over and over. Pastor Shuv saw the way people were so confused about the gospel, even though the country was filled with Christian churches. That's why he started to think how we can start a radio, a Christian radio to preach many people in one time. After some time, he told us that God has answered his prayers. Uh, and he said, 
the radio is no longer a dream. Soon we start preparation of the radio. The radio started really with a great blessing because they started using its own tower with powerful equipment, especially the transmitter set on top of the Jari mountain, uh, which uh, helped to cover the entire region uh, with clear and clean waves. What was amazing, the radio was able to cover even the part of Rwanda, Tanzania, Burundi, and Uganda, and in those uh, neighboring countries where the radio reaches, the people listen to Kenya Rwanda easily. Amazing Grace Radio did an extraordinary job. I'm here to testify it. With its strong and wide editorial line, which was preaching the good news from the Holy Bible, and the capacity reading in different domains, like social, health, justice, democracy, environment, culture, sports, and behavior change, we have been able to change and awaken many people, both spiritually and socially. Amazing Grace Radio was reputed to be the most conservative radio according to its sound doctrines, preachers, and music, and it also was reputed to be the very democratic radio according to the debates used to take place on it. There was every last Saturday of each month the program called the Solano Kiwa. Get understanding? which used to bring together different pastors to discuss hard topics of the Bible and Christianity with only one reference, the Bible. Even though many people fear to debate on the Word of God, for us, we used to do it basing on the Bible. Does the Bible allow debate? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, because the Bible shows clearly Jesus and the lawyer debate the commandments, which is the greater in the commandments. Uh, you can find that in Matthew chapter 22, verse 35 to 40. Another famous debate you can find in, uh, in the Bible was the exchange with Nicodemus found in John 3 verse 1 to 13. Having thus acknowledged the immediate foregoing controlled uh, religious debating or disputing for the purpose of testing preachings and arriving at the truth as it is often observed in the New Testament and is a threat of spirit to prompt the preachers uh, as you can find in Acts chapter 15, verse 1 to Acts chapter 17, verse 2, where Apparas is seen as a powerful debater in the earlier church, like you can read that in Acts chapter 18, verse 24 to 28. Many do not care for debating today because they don't care for the truth and the necessity of establishing truth relative to the Bible subjects. So for Amazing Grace, that was the goal, to read the truth called out and the truth to make or set people free. We had also a special program every Sunday morning called Bible and the Quran, the Book of Muslims. Uh, in which we used to invite people believers to have a good knowledge in each of those books so that the people can discuss the content of those books and then the, again the truth be said and the people get right. It was not on religious programs we had debates only but we had also a great program with colorful presenters called Morning Show 
utensil or sharpener or making somebody much smarter in which we used to talk and discuss about the life of the country in all its corners according to editorial line. Bad preachers, false preachers, false prophets, and bad political leaders, and especially in a dictatorship as anyone, they never, never wish to rule over smart people. They always want uh, people who are like sheep to read them however and wherever they want. So Amazing Grace Christian Radio was enemy of both false prophets and bad political leaders. Christian Radio was enemy of both false prophets and false preachers on one side and to the other side enemy of bad political leaders. All obviously joined the hands uh, to destroy and fight Amazing Grace Christian Radio. They started on its staff, then to the church of Cornerstone of the church of Pastor Missionary Grobeshoof, and finally to the radio itself. And they did uh, under created charges, as they did for me, was the journalist and the manager of the radio by accusing me conspiracy against the established government for only by work of journalists pointing out the needs of population and the reconciliation among Rwandans which were contrary to the rights uh, preached, by, uh, preached by the government of Rwanda. How amazing grace became a threat to the government of Rwanda. Uh, because of its conservative approach on the Bible and its seriousness in selecting preachers and music to air, the radio quickly conquered the hearts of many people and within a short period of time it had already a big audience but also it had many enemies, as I said here about. In 2011, we offered a free weekly hour to Transparency International Water, but it used to pay when they wish extra time. In that show, we helped the Transparency International Rwanda to sensitize and carry out its policy of contributing to the fight against corruption and promote good governance through enhancing integrity in the Rwandan society. In 2012 and 2013, we successfully won the bid of airing a show called Obutabera Iwatch, literally mean justice at home, from the ministry of justice. Uh, we use the also to invite uh, various officials to talk uh, about the different matters, uh, touching the lives of the people. Among those, I can say, uh, ombudsmen, ministers, and uh, many others. Uh, because uh, the people were feeling so free with Amazing Grace Christian Radio, soon people from remote area. Uh, started bringing their problems to Amazing Grace Studio so that we help them submitting those problems to the officials in charge uh, to help them finding a solution according to the programs we used to listen to the radio. I remember we used to get some journalists uh, to accompany those people from remote area uh, to the Office of Transparency International, to the Office of Guzman, to the Ministry of Justice, because they you had no idea of locations of the office or headquarters of those uh, institutions. Uh, I remember even amazing Christian radio staffs uh, used to shelter even some people who came from very far and without enough money to eat and for lodging in the hotels. 
uh, those people dropped to amazing Christian radio many, many, many problems, especially relating to injustice, corruption, persecution, harassment, and many other human rights abuses by some officials and local leaders. As the owner and the director was an American citizen, and most of the time present and meet in the person of some of those people crying for him and for the radio to add a focus. Uh, the government, through its secret service, started to see a message Christian Christian radio as a friend and that to Pastor Missionary Greg Shuf, a uh, view to say that he might be less inspired than a missionary. I can't finish without showing you how the revocation of Amazing Grace Christian Radio's license was a political decision. Pastor Nicholas Samuel was only the pretext. Here are three things to know well in order to understand what happened. Point one, as a Christian radio, on Amazing Grace Christian Radio, we had two important group of staff, journalists and pastors. The journalists were governed by the media law and the other press media and they had press cards issued by the Rwanda Media Commission. While pastors were governed by the, their contract between them and Amazing Grace Radio. Those pastors had no press card, which means they were not journalists. In their contract was a clear mention that pastor will be responsible for whatever he can say on the radio, that is against the law of Rwanda. There were other many things prohibited according to the radio policy and the editorial line. So, uh, without uh, any decision, without uh, any court case, without uh, even giving chance to the radio management, Rura and the RMC Rwanda Media Commission imposed sanctions and condemned the radio without looking at the status of the person who aired the program, then they quickly went against the radio, which that shows that there was something behind. Point two. In its letter, Rura explained like this, the conduct of Amazing Grace Radio violates Article 21, number 004, slash R, slash M, R, M, C, A, slash Lula, slash 2012, of 30 June 2017, governing the services in Rwanda in regards to upholding public morality and Rwandan culture and values in general. Accusing Amazing Grace Radio to not upholding the Rwandan culture is totally amazing and completely ridiculous. Let me say three things to show you how Amazing Grace Radio is a different radio. Amazing Grace Radio is the only radio and the only institution in Rwanda that the public condemned the non-national government of Rwanda overrowing Mashirika Performing Arts and the Media Company in 2012. Rwanda the Telecom Company and later Rwanda Inspiration Backup to violate the Rwanda culture in exposing the nakedness of young Rwandan women in choosing the most beautiful and skilled girl in what they call Miss Rwanda event. I remember in 2012, uh, we invited Mr. Boniface Luchar, who was chairman of Itorero, which is a national Itorero commission 
who's the most important commission is uh, to to run and is to make them understand their shared values and taboos in the coexistence, uh, be patriotic and contribute to national development. He wasn't being able to answer uh, and to give uh, satisfactory uh, answers to the questions journalists were asking him and uh, people questioning him from audience uh, calling in in time. We printed the shameful photos and we sent them to the office of the first lady, Janet Kagame, in the Input Foundation. Uh, she used um, to act as if she is doing something good for the women in Rwanda. So, accusing Amazing Grace Radio of violating the Rwandan culture and its uh, villages is uh, totally a lie. It's not to know its standard. It, it only shows me, and it, I think, and I guess should show it even everyone, that was something behind. Another thing I can say, uh, Amazing Grace Radio was the only radio that the public denounced the use of rebellious music on the radio and on the TV. Uh, it was the only radio in Rwanda that used to select the music to put on the air and to teach the impact of bad music on the youth particularly and to the world population in general. And it was highly respected for that. So accusing Amazing Grace Radio not to uphold the Rwandan culture and its abilities does honestly not know it. It is honestly not to know it. It simply shows me, and I guess should show even somebody else, that there was something behind. Another point I can say here, uh, in Rwanda, according to its culture, uh, it is strictly forbidden and prohibited to talk about sexuality publicly. Uh, however, there are some radios that air the show in which they teach uh, about sex and even go further and teach how to make sex. They pretend to intervene uh, in the sexual education uh, and saying the program is said and, and is, is scheduled to the late hours like 10 or 11 p.m. Oh, but that is a lie because the children and teenagers in some families are at work. Uh, so in Rwanda now they have uh, in Rwanda now they are a big problem of pregnancy in the teenagers, and nobody accused those radios to violate Rwandan culture. But Amazing Grace Radio, because of a pastor preached the prophetic message with with a woman as a typical distillation of his sermon, uh, that's become a big problem. So, not saying a word to those radios. Uh, and then accusing Amazing Grace Radio not to uphold the Rwandan culture. It is, as I say, ridiculous and it only shows that something was behind. Let me go to 23 of the point I've been saying. Point 3. Pastor Nicholas is a pastor and he was a preacher. In introducing his sermon, as many of you who can listen in Kenya right now, can find on YouTube and listen yourself, uh, he clearly states that the church means a woman. If woman has bad behavior and have a different man, she's called prostitute. Beside that, he tired his sermon secret behind religion and was in the series of prophetic programs. He mentioned many times, wherever you listen the word woman, understand the church. 
He picked in the Bible different verses where women behaved very badly and used them as a picture or illustration of wrongdoings of some churches uh, nowadays. But nobody took attention to analyze the message because they were looking only for a pretext. They rushed to the radio and shut it down. And remember, the Bible says in Second uh, Timothy chapter four, verse two to three, uh, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching. Uh, for the time will come where they will not endure some doctrines, but after their own rust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having eating ears. According to the Bible, Pastor Nicholas had the authority to read the truth out. So he had to rebuke, exhort, in season and out season. When I think on this situation, I also recall of what is written in the Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 27 to 29, uh, in the Bible says, and when they had brought them, they set them before the council, uh, and the high priest asked them, uh, and, we, and, and when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have feared Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's brother up on us. Then Peter and uh, other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Do you think Pastor Nicholas, Pastor Greg Shufo of Amazing Grace Christian Radio, could have disqualified the Word of God and His work in obeying men? Or them also ought to obey God rather than men? For those who have the ears, I think you have understood the truth behind uh, the revocation of Amazing Grace Christian Radio's broadcasting license by the government of Rwanda. Uh, the same government shut down thousands and thousands of churches in the country and persecuted Christians and pastors. In 2014, the government of Rwanda threw me in a prison under created charges, as I said. In 2015, they sentenced me to 25 years in a prison. In October 2016, they kidnapped my three young brothers. Innocent, just because they were my young brothers, my family whom we lived together. Brother Gawanziza Fikir Jimmy, brother Gawanziza Moses, and your brother Ntimana Joel. All until now, nobody knows their way about, nobody knows how and what happened to them. But in 2017, God showed me his great power and mercy, I managed to get out of that prison, and by now I praise him. Until God is ready, nothing will be ready. Thank you very much, and may God bless you. Jesus is keeping watch over my soul, my soul. Jesus is keeping watch over my soul. My